the principle with regards to intoxicants. When we have to determine whether a substance can be taken or not, we have medicines, foods, drinks, etc., which may have in them point zero one or zero five or point two percent alcohol it's written on the label can we take these substances or not when we go back to the sunnah and the quran of course quran stays, says clearly we should avoid intoxicants fudge tenibu don't even come near it what does that mean it one could deduce from that that it means that if there is any alcohol in anything, anywhere, don't even come near them. What about antifreeze? It's alcohol. <laughs> we use it to stop the cars from freezing up and being able to... Antifreeze is alcohol. So when we say don't come near it, it means don't come near it with regards to drinking it consuming it not that you may not use it you know to clean you have you know rubbing alcohol you have cleaning alcohol and we have to be careful chemically there are things which we call alcohol merely because they have the OH molecule this is a chemical title it doesn't mean that if you take this you'll get intoxicated maybe it'll kill you make you blind and you're still not intoxicated <laughs> you understand? so you don't take these things because they're harmful I mean that's the general principle right but it, and though we call it alcohol it doesn't necessarily mean it's alcohol in the sense intended by the Sharia so when we go into the Sunnah we find a principle there stated by the Prophet Muhammad ما أسكر كثيره فقليله حرام. Whatever intoxicates in large amounts, it is forbidden in small amounts. Whatever intoxicates in large amounts is forbidden in small amounts. Now, what people understood from that is that that medicine, that cake, or this. Uh, flavoring or whatever which has 0.0% alcohol there it is haram because you take a large quantity of, of alcohol it's haram it'll get you intoxicated and it's haram but is that what the law meant is that what was meant by the law some people say yes some people say no so how do we know we again go back to whom to the sahaba how did the Sahaba understand that? They said, and it's in Sahih Bukhari, we used to take our drinks to Rasulullah Our Nabid, which is fermented drinks, to Rasulullah and ask him, can we drink these drinks? And he told us that if it intoxicates, you are not allowed to drink it. So, we used to drink Nabiz for the first two or three days. After that, we threw it away. Because in the first two or three days, when the fermentation process started, it was not intoxicant. It had a tang to it. But if you drank it, you didn't get intoxicated. But by the third day, now the alcohol content in it had reached a level where you drank it, you'd get intoxicated. So that they wouldn't take it after that. But what does this mean? It means that from the first day, when fermentation began, alcohol was present. Alcohol was present. So, if a substance has a percentage of alcohol, 
We don't use that to determine whether halal or haram. No. Vinegar has alcohol. Every bottle of vinegar you buy on the market has a percentage of alcohol because vinegar is made from alcohol. You start with fruit juice or whatever and then it ferments into alcohol and after reaching the state of alcohol it continues fermentation until it becomes vinegar. But in the process some alcohol will be in that vinegar because it will not transform 100% and vinegar we know is halal because no matter how many bottles of vinegar you drink you're not going to get intoxicated so similarly what is meant by what intoxicates in small amounts in large amounts is forbidden in small amounts what this means is that vodka if you drink a glass of it you get intoxicated or depending you know if you are a heavy drinker it may take five glasses right but you will get intoxicated you drink a bunch of it to take a teaspoonful of it is haram right? you just pour it in a teaspoon i'm not drinking enough not to get intoxicated only a teaspoon that is haram because you fill the glass you get intoxicated so haram That's the principle. Now the medicine, which has 0.1% of alcohol, if you drank five bottles of it, you drank ten bottles of it, you're not getting intoxicated. You will drink it until you drown yourself in it and you'll still not be intoxicated. It is not haram. It's not haram. The flavoring, which ends up in cake or whatever, there is this minute percentage. That flavoring, if you pour it into a glass and you drink so many glasses of this stuff, vanilla extract, you drink, are you ever going to get intoxicated from vanilla extract? No. Then it's not haram. Rabutessins, yes, Rabutessins is known. Right? Those who are involved in drugs, whenever they can't get drugs, you go and you buy yourself a few bottles of Rabotessins, you drink it up and you do get intoxicated. So Rabotessins is haram. That is the principle. You understand? This is piyas in operation here. Where that principle of intoxication exists, then this substance is haram. Where the principle doesn't exist, it is not haram. Now, can Muslims produce something, a product, which involves them adding minute quantities of alcohol to it? No. We can't. Because it means you had to produce alcohol or buy alcohol. So for you to make it, if this substance you're making, for example, you're making vanilla extract. To make the vanilla extract, you blend some alcohol and you know you put your substance in it which uh, acts as a catalyst whatever but in your end product that percentage of alcohol does remain you can't make that because it means you have to buy alcohol or make alcohol that is haram it is haram to even grow grapes with the intention of selling it to people who are going to make alcohol that's haram so we can't do it. But if you go to the marketplace and the non-Muslims are selling vanilla extract, you can buy it. Though you couldn't produce it because there are certain restrictions on you, if it exists on the market, it exists in trade, you can purchase it and you can use it. Is that point clear? Very, very important point because I think it's confused in the minds of many, many people. And as such, they created you know, difficulties for themselves, which was not intended by the Sharia. 